Hi, I'm Joe Gertis, and this is Coffee in the Capital. My guest today is State Representative Dan Mao, Chairman of the House Local Government Committee, an advocate of government reform, and an Adams County native. Welcome, Representative Mao. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Mr. Chairman, we could spend hours talking about local government issues with your length and breadth of experience. Uh, unfortunately, our time is limited here today, so how about I just toss out some topics and we'll have a, a quick discussion on them. How's Let's that? have a conversation. Great, great. We just had an event yesterday uh, talking about uh, the importance of volunteer firefighters and uh, uh, our EMS personnel around the state. What are some of your thoughts on, uh, on how, we can, uh, how we can move forward to, to kind of help the volunteer firefighter community? Uh, one, of the, one of the complaints that I get from a lot of people that want to enter the fire service as a volunteer is, we just don't have time for all the training that's required, and sometimes they feel it's overkill for the amount of training. Now, we don't want anybody going into a burning building, sure. building without the proper gear Safety's and the proper training. Yep. It is. But, but let's get them into the fire company uh, with a minimum amount of training they can actually jump on a truck, go assist with the hoses, uh, do whatever they need to do, and as they go along, they can take training. And now, from what I understand, uh, we're looking at uh, possibly having uh, volunteers uh, be able to do some of their training online, which, which great help. Great, no doubt. Yeah. No doubt. Let's jump over to another subject. Uh, again, uh, it, it always comes up, it seems, uh, and that's uh, fees for state police service. Uh -huh. uh, obviously of great concern to a lot of our members uh, around the state. Yeah, um, it is a concern. I don't understand why we would want to go down this road, uh, but to charge people for a service that they're already paying for in their state taxes, I think is kind of repugnant. If you choose in your township to have your borough, to have your own police department, God bless you. That's extra coverage you, you decided to have and you made that choice on your own. But for me to devote, to charge a community uh, that can't afford to have their own police coverage, and, and charge them twice for the same police coverage they're already paying for, I just can't, I can't go along with that. That's not gonna happen as far as I'm concerned. Great. Uh, let's also talk about another, another tough issue. <laughs> it's always the tough issues, right, sir? Uh, and that's uh, bringing high-speed internet access to some of our rural communities across the, the Commonwealth. What's happening now is um, that Verizon and I'm pretty sure AT&T are both looking at what, what's called internet sticks. And basically it looks like an antenna, mm -hmm. uh, just a white stick sticking up on top of telephone poles that you actually subscribe to that stick and you can get your internet wirelessly. Okay. And I'm understanding that's part of the 5G network that they're rolling out. So let's hope within a few years down the road that we don't have to talk about fiber optic cable buried underground going 10 miles to get 10 customers these sticks will if you live within so many miles of one just like a cell tower you'll be able to subscribe to it and you'll have your 5g high-speed internet uh, let's talk real quickly about the, the the bill out there right now to help uh, raise the pay of township supervisors and, mm -hmm. and you know sometimes happens as it gets out in the public it, it's kind of misinterpreted sometimes as, <laughs> no. as public officials <laughs> voting themselves a pay raise. Can you talk the, about that the, a little the, bit? The press gets something wrong, um, <laughs> you know, unheard of. Uh, uh, actually I'm a co-sponsor of that bill and that comes out of the local government commission. It's a Lee James bill, he sits on the commission with me and this was their recommendation because I want to say uh, that the supervisor's pay, uh, annual pay, hasn't been adjusted, I want to say since 95? 95. Since they, 1995. Yep. So if everyone was still getting paid at the same rate they were in 1995, nobody would be able to afford, their, afford anything. So you have to keep up with the times a little bit, and we want people running for township supervisor. Sure. We want people to say, okay, I'm not gonna make a lot of money, but at least they're giving me something for my time. Sure. And if you're gonna put your time in for your township, you should be compensated for it. And along with the bill, it actually says that if the supervisors uh, choose to do this, and, and it would take a vote, uh, they can implement a system where is if you move if you miss a meeting, you could 
deduct one twelfth. What that does is it eliminates the person from, that says, well, I'm gonna run if I win. I'm just not gonna show up for any meetings. I'll collect the money. Sure. Well, you're not gonna get paid. Mr. Chairman, I know this next topic is one that, that, uh, that you know, you worked a lot on uh, and uh, just wanted to, to maybe jump into it a little bit and that's stormwater management in DEP. Let me give you an example of why I'm so upset about the way they're administering MS4. Mm -hmm. 25 to 30 years ago, uh, through the Chesapeake Bay Initiative, they said, hey, we've got way too many nitrates in the Chesapeake Bay. You guys in Pennsylvania are polluting our bay. You guys got to do something. So through DEP mandates, almost every single sewer filtration system uh, plant in the Chesapeake Bay watershed had to spend collectively billions and billions of dollars sure. switching over to denitrification systems. And people today are still paying in their bills the mortgage on that, right. which is extremely expensive, okay? So they're still paying for it 25 years later in their water and sewer bills. And we've only moved the needle in the Chesapeake Bay less than 4%. Some experts say 1%. And here's how I equate that. If you were the mayor of a large town city and you hired a company to come in and clean up all the trash in the town, clean it up, right. and you paid them an exorbitant amount of money to do this work, and they picked up for every 100 pieces of trash land, they only picked up four, how long would it take you to fire them? because it's failing. But yet, when it comes to taxpayer money and government, 4%, eh, we missed, so what? We'll try something else. We'll spend some more of your money. Well, here we right. go again. Now we're shooting arrows in the dark, not having any empirical data as to where the pollution's coming in, where the sedimentation's coming in, but we wanna fix it. This is a, an environmental engineer's dream come true, is what this is, at the taxpayer's expense. Great, thanks again, Mr. Chairman. Oh, Appreciate you. having you. That's all the time we have today. Thank, thank you. Thank you, sir. And remember, if you like what you're seeing, subscribe to PSAT's YouTube channel and follow our social media pages for more Township Video News content. Also, to suggest topics for Coffee in the Capitol, email tvn at psats.org or contact me, Joe Gertis, at jgertis at psats.org or give me a ring at 717-763-0930, extension 122. Next Tuesday, look for Dave Talk. And as always, thanks for watching.